Good morning. Welcome to the Public Safety Committee. I'm Councilmember Mitchell Inler, Chair of the Committee. Today is November 24th, and I uh, want to thank you all for being here on time. And we have a quorum, so thank you, colleagues, for being here as well. We've got uh, Council Members Mitchell Farrell, Joe Buscaino, and Monica Rodriguez. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to go into the multiple speaker cards first, um, so we can have uh, Wayne come on up. Got a card on every item. No shit. Now we get to this fucking report on number one, the fire emergency grants. The only thing you can put out is your cock. You can't even put out a fire correctly. Every time a house burns, the fire department is useful as tits on a bull. So no, number one. Number two, you disgusting firefighters again let those houses burn. No, and the protective equipment. The only equipment that protects police and fire these days is an FBI immunity agreement. That's what you need, not the shit that you put on your bodies. Right, Monica? Yes, good. Number three, this national crime gun intelligence. Give Mr. Spinner back his rifle. He needs protection from these fucking council people, please. And number three, Number four, the Administrative Citation Terrorism Program. Number four was started by the city attorney, the late Carmen Drutanich, rest in peace. This fucking disgusting program allows terrorists from the administrative arm of the Terrorism Bureau of Public Safety including that bald-headed Mitchell Englander to issue fines with a due process of law. So I say fuck number four. Number five, LAPD computer needs. There is nobody in the LAPD that knows anything past Windows 95. Fuck you and your computers. Now we get to the general comments. Well, one minute. Can we put one minute for general public comment? Thanks. So we are having a change of the guard here. FBI agents enforcing. Okay, it's got to be items. Safety. Items under under the purview public of this committee. Safety yeah. is the FBI and the LAPDs work with the FBI. See, every police officer here is a snitch for the FBI, and so what they do is is the FBI coordinates joint task force and they give immunity to deputies to rat out people like Jose Wizar and people like Joe Buscaino who himself is a rat and a city council cocksucker at the same time ratting out the lovely Janice home to the FBI under public safety protocols which are illegal and of course the silver tongue cop continues to talk while I talk because he's a stupid fucking shit. Finally, fuck you and Jane England that are in the asshole. Uh, you're done. You Thank dumb you. Jew. Okay, now you're disrupting this meeting. That's what I thought. All right. Armando Herman. Didn't I sign up as Herman, sir? Mr. Chair? I don't know. Did you, Armando? I don't know. Is it Lindsay or Lauren? Hey. One more. Bring it. Fire Commission I didn't think so. regarding the acceptance of kid donations. Isn't that how we get into trouble, accepting gifts mm -hmm. that are not honored under the city ethics? But Weezer knows that. And so the Los Angeles Clippers and Los Angeles Lakers game tickets now by Steve Littleman. And the fashion building was only valued at $26,000. Kind of sounds like a benefit out the door. 
Then we got the Los Angeles Police Department relative to respond to the fiscal year. Budget recommendation. Fuck the police. Only because they were fucking cadets. But this has to do with BMW. Why are these electric vehicles still sitting parked and not used by police officers to do the business of the people? Because we have a morons. <coughs> Then we go into the update of the city attorney LLC status. Fuck Mike Fuhrer. Item number four. Community impact statement. None. Then you go into the city administrative officer approval program funds. National crime. Give Mr. Spindler his guns back to protect him against the retaliation of City Hall and that of Jose Weizar and the Get FBI. Just one minute for general public Amen. comment. Now that I, Father John of the Salesian Bishop Moore, have recognized the FBI in its investigation, I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the fucking truth that the city police department, in collaboration with Jose Wheeler and the development, have stolen not millions but thousands of millions of dollars from the public so called interest funds. In addition to that, we have Joe Buscignano, the Italian. Hey, you're not, Italian you're not on arms under the purview of this committee. Nigger, okay, you're done. Cut his time. Breeze, Thank you very much. Money away now you're just up to the screen. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Cordemont. Have I got what? 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 Thank you. What? 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 Uh, and, and squirt out Wayne also Stop while you're at it. Stop Take them both. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I got another one. Because you're disrupting this meeting, you're banned from the next meeting as well. Both of you. You're continuing to disrupt this meeting. Sergeants, they're, they're banned for the next meeting from public safety. Continuing to disrupt this meeting. So they will not be at the next public safety committee meeting either. Eric Previn, do you want to... You want to top that too? Oh, good Lord. Yeah. My name is Eric Previn, and uh, these remarks are protected by the First Amendment, so please do not interrupt. Or Stick to the count of the items on the agenda. Okay. So there are several items that caught my attention. First, I'd just like to say thanks to, to Needleman, uh, both Annette and Jack, who once again have provided a, a, a delightful product. It's kind of a $1,475 set of tickets times, I believe we got 18 packages. The only question I have, and I do, I do like both the Clippers and the Lakers, is the calculation to provide six uh, Clipper packages, or is no, uh, six Laker packages, obviously the more storied franchise, and then a dozen Clipper packages raises equity questions. So I don't know. I mean, uh, we're not going to say no to this kind of a thing. And certainly we're appreciative of uh, Ann Jack having some business out in Porter Ranch as well. So thank you, Mr. Englander, for greasing that one along. Now, um, going to the BMWs, first of all, it was in this very hall that the great Bob Smith sat here. Uh, Bob Smith, BMW, great guy. We rolled back some, uh, or looked at, and then Blumenfield raised his little hand, and then we pushed through uh, some kind of a tax waiver for dealers only. But here what we have is a, a program to see if we can get some of these greener vehicles rolling. And I think uh, it was a little bit questioned, you, do the LAPD need BMWs and such? And here we, we sampled some cars, um, and I just noted that the Tesla, which Chief Beck was driving, I guess we kept for 18 months, whereas the Mirai from Toyota, uh, or rather Fiat, we kept for one week in 2015. So I, I don't think it was a fairly skewed kind of test. But what we determined was these charging stations are a pain in the ass. So how do we get uh, something going there? Now, I don't know. I think we should keep testing this. Some of the Toyotas, for example, have much longer mileage. You can go 20, 225 miles, whereas only 80 in a BMW. So I don't, I don't quite understand that one. Um, regarding uh, the company that I would guess you would call. All right, so you have one minute for general public comment. Yeah, so they got a little more time than I did. Is that how that works, sir? Anyway, I'll just quickly say that uh, I'm all for um, the Justice and Security, Inc. 
Strategies, Inc. getting an extra 99,000, but it would be good to know what they're advising us on regarding gun uh, efforts in our uh, department. I just think that that's a little bit general and vague. Now, the fire department um, has had a tough time, obviously, and I want to submit to your item for the FEMA request this letter, which was actually about the infrastructure to fight fires here uh, in Los Angeles. We took note first here at City Hall about a Motorola procurement that seemed a little light on competitive bidding. And then they pointed to a county procurement that seemed even lighter. So we have asked the Board of Supervisors, who just kind of topped off yet another Motorola portable radio deal, to explain how that represented anything like a fair procurement. So I would add this to the case file, which I'll clarify with Sharon momentarily. And thank you for your time. All right. Um, is there a Miss, Mrs. Black here? No, okay, I didn't think so. We'll go ahead and remove that name. Uh, and that concludes all of the public comment and general public comments. We'll go ahead and close public comment and general public comment for the remainder of the meeting. I have a number of items that I'd like to ask colleagues on consent. Uh, three, four, five, six, and seven. Four being a note and file. Five being a receive and file. And six being a note and file. No objection. No objection without objection. That'll be the order. Move the end. All right, so moved, and then we'll hear items one and two uh, to approve the LAFD recommendations. So item one. Morning. Morning. Um, my name is Emilio Rodriguez with the Administrative Services Bureau, the Fire Department. If okay, I'd like to present a brief summary of our report. Great. Thank you. Uh, in August, the Los Angeles Fire Department was approved for the 2017 Staffing for Adequate Fire Emergency Response uh, SAFER grant in the amount of $4.6 million. SAFER grants are offered to improve firefighter staffing levels for fire suppression resources. In 2016, the LAFD was awarded uh, $15.5 million to staff four new engines in Echo Park, Lincoln Heights, Reseda, and Mission Hills. Together with city matching funds, the 2017 award will allow the department to staff Light Force 38 in Wilmington. This essentially restores a um, reduction of um, seven Light Force units back in 2011-2012. Uh, it'll restore by one unit for net reduction of six. The grant performance period covers three years from January 7, 2019 through January 6, 2022 during which the city would commit to hiring 21 new full-time sworn positions above the current staffing level of 2846 positions. Under the grant terms, FEMA reimburses the city on a cost share basis of 75% of expenditures in the first two years and 35% in the third year for a maximum reimbursement of 4.6 million. The grant reimburses for salary and fringe benefits only. Additional costs that are necessary to fully implement the light forest resource include constant staffing overtime, which is represented in Table 2 of the report before you, and the cost to upgrade a total of nine firefighter authorities to uh, Fire Captain 2, Engineer, and Apparatus Operator to fulfill the appropriate staffing mix for a light force unit. The overall cost over the three-year period is $11.6 million, which results in a general fund share of $7.5 million after netting out the safer funds. Uh, this results in a cost share ratio of 40% federal over 60% uh, city share commitment, over, again, over the three-year term. There are no additional training costs in, in as much as the safer recruits would be absorbed into a regularly scheduled training class in January of 2019. Um, finally, during the three-year performance period, the department must maintain a minimum staffing level of 2,867 field members, uh, which is, again, 21 above the staffing level at the time of the grant application. Um, thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions? Colleagues? Comment? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is um, a long-awaited opportunity to restore um, Fire Station 38 in Wilmington, and um, we've been patient, and we were assured by uh, Chief Terrazas that um, through the efforts of working with our partners um, at all levels, we were uh, get awarded this. And 
Um, Ralph, uh, Chief Trazes and I had an opportunity to, to meet with uh, the firefighters at 38 a couple weeks back. Um, we were all in celebration mode as we heard about the safer grant coming down. Um, and we owe it to the Wilmington residents. Um, oftentimes, as we know, um, sometimes resources get pulled out of um, the harbor area and um, to know that Yes, it took a while, and this was a priority of mine. We we worked with um, the fire chief, the mayor's office, to restore 38s, and um, I had an opportunity to meet and sit down with the firefighters there and the residents, and um, just happy we finally got to this point. So thank you for um, getting us to restore Light Force 38. I know this is a citywide issue um, at all corners, and doing everything we can to restore the staffing levels from back in 2011 and happy we got to this point. So thank you so much for the presentation and the, the being relentless uh, to Chief Terrazas and, uh, 30, and Fire Station 38. Uh, we made a commitment to, to restore the light force and finally got here, so thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I can provide testimony for this grant and what it's done to restore the resources over at Fire Station 50 in Echo Park. Um, and so I couldn't be happier with that result. And that's, that fire station is now fully restored yeah. and the men and women there are over the moon happy about it. Um, and it's one of the busier stations. So um, as we, you know, I think on, on this, um, this plan to restore all of our um, resources at all the fire stations, then I think with the backdrop of the recent fires uh, in Malibu, uh, it's a reminder of how important and critical it is that we have the support, the staffing, and the resources for all of our fire stations. So um, just want to give you a congratulations for what you've done in my district. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, question, among the SAFER grants, I know we just had uh, one installment, this is the next. Are there any others that are pending right now potentially to help restore uh, the full suite of services that have been cut previously? Uh, additional grants in process? Um, I have uh, in the audience uh, Drew Steinberg, who's our grant specialist in that regard. Hi, Drew Steinberg, Fire Stat Manager. Um, so right now the SAFER grants uh, has not opened the SAFER 2018 option yet. So we have not moved forward with the grant application for that specific grant. How many additional stations citywide? I know, uh, I know we just also restored Fire Station 75s in my district. Uh, we still have 74s that is, uh, doesn't have the engine service restored yet. So potentially how many um, <clears throat> additional stations uh, are outstanding for... Uh, so in the 2011-2012 uh, fiscal year, we had lost 19 resources, 7 light forces, and 12 engines. We've restored 8 engines, and this is the first light force that we've restored. So we have an additional 4 engines remaining and an additional 6 light forces. Okay. Terrific. Thank you very much. And that, so these are, these are obviously priority for additional safer grants uh, as we continue to pursue those resources? Uh, we'll be looking at uh, call load and um, volume as well as response times in addition to what is necessary if, if, if for restoring of resources. And are we, uh, are we prioritizing based on like a heat map for response times to assure that we're helping to make uh, a substantive impact as far as the response times where we see the most uh Vulnerabilities. One of, uh, one of the goals of the fire department actually within our budget for uh, FY 1920 is to receive funding to move forward with the standards of cover, which would then assist us in determining heat maps for response times um, as well as call volume, et cetera. Great. Really? Okay. Well, thank you very much. I also want to uh, give my thanks to UFLAC for their support and leadership in helping to assure that we uh, have been successful in securing these. these they've, they've been an incredible partner to assuring that we actually are able to restore these services back in our neighborhood. So thank you very much. Thank you. Great. No, thank you. And uh, I'd also, um, I want to thank the department, uh, particularly the fire stat unit, um, that in going after these types of grants are very competitive. Um, they're not as easy as they sound when they get to committee and they're in a nice, pretty bow, and we just simply move it along. Um, and we've also had some tremendous help at the top with Frank Lima as well. And uh, there's a guy that's never forgotten where he came from. 
he takes very good care of us and is and, and all the agencies he represents but I know he was instrumental and helpful in, in achieving this as well so hats off to to Frank so thank you all for that um, with this though um, what we do need is we don't have a CAO report I don't believe yet on it so what I would recommend is that we approve this here out of public safety recommend uh, a CEO report gets forwarded onto the budget and finance committee as soon as possible and uh, and then move it over to that committee so they can improve it which is our normal standard operating procedure and protocol all right yeah that's fine I understand right. it's um, it'll be scheduled for December 10th so that's my understanding yeah terrific thanks we'll see you there thank okay you. thank you so much all right it's approved uh, with that we have item two which is the assistance for firefighters grant program award good morning I'm battalion chief Mark Wolf from Homeland Securities Division uh, grant section uh, we uh, went for and uh, was awarded uh, 1.4 million dollars for the firefighter bailout system through the uh, assistance to firefighter grant 17 we did have the collaborative effort of the IFF we went and actually talked to their grant writers and had a uh, collaborative effort because they're so successful and they know how it's written and how it's awarded um, we are the number three city in the nation uh, with high rises over 12 stories uh, yet we have very little to support the firefighters if in fact they need to bail out of the windows uh, it's called the uh, window hang which is a horrible way of putting it but what they do is hang out the window until someone can get to them unfortunately our ladders do not reach that high and we do not have anything uh, to support them as a protective uh, personal equipment uh, so we are happy to state that uh, along with New York we now have a system for our firefighters if they do get trapped and we have a system of a safety belt that actually hooks into their breathing apparatus it acts like a repelling belt they have their own pouch with 50 feet of fire retardant uh, rope they can get them to a a floor that is not impacted with a hook that goes inside uh, we secured enough money to uh, adapt all our breathing apparatus which they would take in and wear if they were going above ground anyway and then one per person so that they could make sure every morning with their personal equipment that they're ready and safe unfortunately Black Sunday took the life of five firefighters in New York because they had no way of bailing out and they had to escape by jumping out of a fifth story mm -hmm. uh, which not only uh, caused the death of uh, five very brave people but cost the city 183 million dollars in lawsuits uh, so uh -huh. we are proactive in this and we're not waiting for this to happen uh, and we are very successful with the collaborative effort with the IFF and Frank Lima's help great oh appreciate it and uh, colleagues do you want to comment on this one I have a question yeah. If you don't, yes, sure. So this this life-saving apparatus, how does it work? Does it, does it allow them to repel down the side of the building? Uh, Fifty feet is uh -huh. what we, which is five floors. Mm -hmm. which they will be able to get either to a floor that's not as impacted as the floor they're at, mm -hmm. or be able to get them to a low enough floor that they will be able to get picked up by one of our ladders mm -hmm. in that system. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No, congratulations I'm uh, you know delighted to hear the success in securing again another grant uh, to support this critical equipment for our firefighters uh, you know I remember back in the day the first interstate fire and some of these other high-rise circumstances that we had historically here in, in LA uh, but making sure that our firefighters are, are properly equipped to help mitigate whatever circumstances they might endure I think this is obviously a uh, you know we are in a new world with yeah. our high rises so thank you very much for your work on this uh, thank you for your help in fighting the we're fun. matching 15 percent which is very little but i know in these tough economic times we're very appreciative that that extra money was uh, acquired and, and uh, earmarked thank you okay um all right thank you very much great again great work and uh and thanks to all the partners in this as well uh, we'll go ahead and refer this item as well only to budget and finance because it's got a UB transfer so we'll go ahead and refer this item to the budget and finance committee and that concludes this agenda this meeting oh nope Ooh. spoke too soon um, we're gonna actually reconsider all of the items that are on the agenda today so we can include council member Rue and uh, since he's here as well and so um, we'll go ahead and uh, all items um, we'll go ahead and move unanimously from this committee without objection then that's approved.
I just have a question for item two. Yes. Um, you ref okay. um, you you had stated you're referring this to the budget and finance committee. Correct. Um, because the only thing before you are the recommendations from the report. Right. Um, and so we'll approve those recommendations, but we want to refer it to budget and finance because there's a UB transfer involved. So you want that as one of the recommendations in the report to yes. council? Okay. Please. Thank you. Okay. Great. And um, now that concludes the agenda. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Have a great Thanksgiving. Be safe. Thank you.